So if you've downloaded the Piston Setup Single Start file, you see there's some pretty simple geometry in there. You have a subdivision surface in there. It's okay. It's not like super detailed, but uh, it will work for our needs. I'm going to turn this off. And um, there's basically three sections. There's this first section, which is what we're going to use to animate. And that's our uh, crankshaft with the offset. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's the offset. And then our rod, okay, right here, and our piston head, okay. So um, let's get started by actually putting some animation on our crankshaft. And so we're going to animate this in B. We'll put a keyframe at zero. Uh, let's bring this up to 40. Uh, oh, come on. Okay, at 40, um, just put 360 in here. So basically uh, one revolution. And then come down and select this in your uh, timeline. And we want to change the interpola interpolation from spline to linear because we don't want it to start up slow and, and, and slow down at the end. We want it to be constant. And if you come over here in the properties for this, uh, set this after to uh, repeat and I'm just going to put a hundred in there so that I know that it will just keep repeating. So if we hit this now we see that we have a constant nice animation on that. Okay so let's go back to zero <clears throat> and pull this down. So one of the, the first thing we want to do is this connecting rod um, is centered on this uh, this the offset part of the crankshaft. So this is where we want to uh, put our constraint tags. So you know, character, and I'm right clicking to get to that. Uh, come down to character tags, add a constraint. And so we're going to add a PSR at first, and we want to constrain this to this large part of the crankshaft right there. So if we go into our ro rotate and you see when I clicked on it I had already selected that. So come back in here and I'm going to deselect that. I don't want to and pull two of them in there. And I want to pull this crankshaft big rod or rod big end into this field for position and rotation. And nothing should move. If it does we got a problem. So not, nothing moved and that's good. And so now if we hit this, we have that connected and spinning crazy. So that's a fairly easy fix. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our uh, constraint tag, come back up here, and we're going to add aim to this. And so if we go into the aim tab, it's looking for a target. And um, what we want is... I've already named it the rod aim target and what that is is a null that is sitting right in the very center of this gudgeon pin and the very center of this piston. And we want that arm to always point at that target. So let's go back to our constraint tag and just pull this in here. And it's going to get crazy because we have to tell it which direction we want it to be on. And we want it to be on, um, let's go back here in the crankshaft. Uh, where are we? Yep. And you can see that Y is pointing up. And so that's the direction we want. We want plus Y. So if you go into axis and hit plus Y, immediately it gets straightened out. Okay, so... Now we've got that. Let's see what it looks like if we hit our playhead. And okay, so we've got the motion, uh, this uh, piston motion. Everything's staying connected to the crankshaft. Uh, but you can see that uh, it's, it's pretty wild motion. And of course our piston isn't moving. And so 
This is where um, we will start rigging this up with Espresso. So before we get to the Espresso, let's go into the front view so we can see this from the side. And so let's take a look at this right now. We've got this crazy motion going on. And um, part of it is because of where our, um, our target is that we uh, are aiming this rod at. And so in reality, that target, okay, and this piston head needs to stay here. But if you take the target and you place it into the hierarchy with the uh, rod, it will go all crazy, okay? It has to be in a separate hierarchy, which we have it in, okay? And there's another issue with that. And let me show you. If I come over here and select this piece, you'll see that um, this, it's called uh, the connect rod small top, okay? As, uh, let me turn this on. And let's go into the uh, uh, attributes manager. And you see with all that movement it has, it's registering no movement in here, okay? And that's a real problem because w what good is it to connect to that if we're not going to get some, some movement out of it or to try to set up an expression? And you could go into the local matrix objects, uh, uh, but that gets way crazy and there's a way simpler way of doing this. So what we need to do is find something that will give us an output so that we can then connect to uh, this uh, rod. So let's go in to uh, select the crankshaft itself. And if you go into point mode, um, for some reason we're not, oh, I, I see, I've got the wrong thing selected. You need the connecting rod top. And if we go into point mode, I'm gonna deselect, there was a point selected and we come out there's this point right here, okay? And we can connect to that point. And that point is going to give us um, an actual output of movement. So what we want to do is come up here and create a null. We can just call this uh, point um, null, real creative, okay? And let's take that point null and bring it down under this main uh, null hierarchy. Don't put it in any of these. Let's let's leave it right here. And uh, then let's go to our main null and put a an espresso tag. We'll pull this up. And so we just need a simple uh, point setup. But there's one thing we need to do first is let's go in back into our point mode. <clears throat> and this point we selected has an exact uh, address or ID number, if you will. And if you go into your structure tab, now mine is nested over here. If yours isn't, then it probably isn't. Go up under Window and come down to Structure Manager. The reason it didn't show up is because I've already got it here. Anyway, if you go down, you see that that point is point 27. That's its ID. So we want to remember that. <clears throat> so let's go in here, right click, New Node, and we want to grab this point node and it's going to turn up yellow because it wants an object and the object it wants is this one because this is the point we want to reference so if you click on this object port and hold and drag over here you can release and come down to object <clears throat> yellow light goes off means we're ready and if you click on the point node itself you can see a point index and we need 27 in there. And so we need something to connect to that point and that's where this point null comes in. So let's drag the point null down into here and under the point position port, grab that, click, hold, and then release. And we're gonna go down and grab the uh, global position, okay? And so if I select that point null, you can see that it is there and let's just give it a little bit of uh, visualness here so that we can see it. All right, so that's our connection. So what happens now if we press play? So let's press play and let's select this point null and go into the coordinates. Now we're getting all kinds of movement. <clears throat> but you can see we have a little bit of a problem. 
um, right here, you see how the, let me slow this down. See how the null does not want to follow it? It keeps jerking back there. And if you play it in real time, it really gets far away from there. Well, that's a priority issue. So, and there, it didn't even go back to its spot. So if we go up to this uh, Expresso tag, and 30 seems to work pretty well. Just put 30 in there, <clears throat> and then we press play. That took care of our issue. Go back down here, <clears throat> and we still have um, a lot of movement going on. But there's a movement in here we don't want, and that's this movement in Y. But we're going to take care of that in our next Expresso we set up. So we need this. Uh, this is our piston. I'm going to roll these closed for a second. This is our piston. <clears throat> and we can't have it moving the way that's moving. Okay, that's going, that's crazy. This piston has to work like a regular piston. It has to move only along X. And that's the movement we want right there. So while this arm is going crazy all over, this just needs to move back and forth. So let's set that up. We want to take our point null because that's what we want to read. But instead of reading all the coordinates, all we want to read is, is position x. And I want you to grab the regular position because we want it to be local, not global. <clears throat> so if we grab position x, all we're reading, if I turn this on, is this top one. We're eliminating Y. Okay? So I'm going to bring this aim target. This is our piston null. And that is right on the center of our gudgeon pin. I'm going to drag it in here. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to coordinates, position, and all, again, only X. And so I'm going to hook this to that. And that should jump right to that piston. Uh, it, I'm sorry, to the uh, point null on our rod. Okay, and it does, but that's not where we want it, okay? And while it seems to be working pretty well, and it actually is, um, it's still not in the place we want it, but we do have the motion we want. So that's simple enough. <clears throat> let's deselect that, and let's right-click, go to New Node, Expresso, Calculate, and put in a Math Node. And now if we connect these ports... Okay, nothing's going to happen. Let's come in close. But if you come over here in your math node, you see we're in add, and that's what we want. And if you start moving this, I'm moving in negative. And you want to get that as centered as possible. So now what we have is our piston is connected, and our aim target is right in this spot where we want our rod uh, axis to point to. And now, because it is in a separate uh, hierarchy than the actual uh, connecting rod, then it can point at it and also give us our movement. So I'm going to hit F1, go back into the uh, perspective viewport, and I'm going to go back to zero. Now, I built it this way uh, on purpose because I wanted to be able to easily line things up. But because we have this all in a null, um, we can now rotate this to whatever position we want. And I'm going to redo that and just make it to 45. It doesn't really matter, but um, well, actually I'm going to make it 50 since that um, clicked in there quantizing. Um, and it still works perfectly. And it's really smooth. Um, and it's going to be smooth throughout the animation because we're not using any dynamics. It's all a calculation. And so you can come in here and move this to a point if you want. So I'm, I'm not going to... I'm going to make a copy of this. And you see that I have L1. I have basically left and 1. Um, and so it's easy to name these. So if I go in here, I'm going to middle mouse click so that everything in this, uh, everything in this hierarchy is selected. I'm going to go to my tools, uh, get the naming tool, and I'm going to replace L-1 underscore with, uh, oops, sorry, something's already in there, with R-1 uh, underscore and replace the name. And so now they've all changed. And I'm going to get out of polygon mode, 
click away because all I want is actually all I want is this and so um, with that selected I'm gonna hit rotate and you see that's not gonna work so if you come up here and get into the world access system then you'll be able to turn this easily and I'm gonna hold the shift key to quantize so I get exactly 180 um, I'm gonna go to the overhead F2 and get my move tool or select tool and I'm gonna move this up uh, to about there now the way I have this set up we need that uh, I have it set up as separate pieces so if we go in here and you hit your main shaft that's gonna select just that and I want to get out of that mode I want to see wireframe and hidden okay so now we just have this this is the actual main crankshaft so if we bring this down uh, this way and you can you can space these any way you want but um, you know I'm 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 pretty good with that uh, for those two so I'm gonna go back into perspective view hit F1 uh, now we got our two pistons and uh, of course the, the piston uh, that we just created uh, R1 is going the wrong direction and that is so simple to fix you come in here to R1 and if you grab just this keyframe and put a minus over here in the properties in front of that 360 uh, we will have fixed that problem okay so there seemed like there was one and the other thing is and uh, you want to get these to offset and you can and again you can pull this speed if you want it to go slower or faster um, but to offset it just drag one of them uh, and I'm gonna drag it down at 20 and minus 20 and so now it's perfectly offset and uh, that's it alright thanks for joining me